What up y'all, this is Patrick Hayes. And today I wanna to talk about right and wrong, good and evil. It's a deep subject, but the reason I wanna talk about this is because in this day and age, it's become a difficult thing to discern oftentimes what is right or wrong or good and evil, especially in this postmodern landscape where there is a running philosophy or theory that there is no actual right or wrong there's actually just everybody's individual opinion and everybody is justified in having their own individual opinion. But there is no actual quantifiable way of establishing what right or wrong is. For a long time in our history, we had things like you know, religion and metaphysics that were explaining to us what was right and what is wrong. But now we have this story that is very much scientifically created um, and when I say scientifically, I mean reductionist scientific creation, meaning it's the science that doesn't really have any spiritual um, connection, but it's this basic general narrative that we are a mistake on a spinning rock in the middle of nowhere, basically, and there's no real purpose or meaning to life. Now, that has very much led people to a kind of nihilistic point of view where they reject values and morals and it's like, well, it doesn't really make a difference. There's no purpose here. There's no, you know, real um, uh, metaphysical reality. There's no spiritual reality. So what we do doesn't matter and there is no right or wrong. We're just like a mistake, an organism that just developed randomly over, you know, billions of years from nothing. And, but it was just a random mistake. So we have this this kind of point of view that um, has led to, in many ways, uh, what we're looking at now in the landscape of uh, moral relativism. So there's a lot of people that see morality as a relative thing. It's not something that is really concrete. There's not like a concrete set of values or moral standards. It's just like, well, you know, whatever you think it is, is like, you know, that's the way you think of it and that's fine you can think your own thing and while I'm all for um, freedom of thought and freedom of opinion I feel like there is a way of quantifying morality and there's a lot of people that are actually working to quantify morality namely Jordan Peterson people like uh, Sam Harris these people are looking to figure out a way of quantifying scientifically what is right or wrong what is good or evil and they're working to do that by grounding it in science. And when, you know, if, if we could ground something like that in science and make it very clear that this is actually, you know, right and wrong, this is good and evil, then it would be something that would be more universally digestible and it would actually bring people all on the same page. This is why Jordan Peterson pushes so hard for, uh, in a sense, like the, the revitalization of certain religious uh, notions because he felt like that was a kind of glue that kept the society from spinning into nihilism and chaos. And I resonate with that to a certain degree. Now, I, I, I also resonate with Sam Harris in the sense that I don't think religion is really the answer for us because religion has caused so much destruction. But I feel like I have an answer for how to ground morality into a kind of codified understanding that is scientifically validated. And this was inspired by a video I watched years ago um, by Manly Hall, who was a, uh, you know, he's a mystic in the earlier 1900s. And Manly Hall, Manly P. Hall, talked about the human energy field. And he talked about how to determine right or wrong based off of the effect on the human energy field. So essentially, anything that is destructive or restrictive or disorganizing to the human energy field is by nature wrong. And anything that is revitalizing and building and expansive and organizing for the energy field, the human energy field, is right. And so, you know, I've been pondering this for a long time. And I know that measuring the human energy field has its 
difficulties, and I'll get a little bit into that in a minute. But from this perspective, a simple way of looking at it is what is healthy is right, and what is unhealthy is wrong. And maybe there will be some people that disagree with that, maybe some people that are really um, like anti-life, that maybe have a perception that humans like don't deserve to live or like that the world needs to be destroyed. And there's probably a small percentage of people that think that way. But for the vast majority of us, I think we can all agree that we don't want to destroy life and that which nurtures and uplifts life is something that we resonate with and can vibe with and be like, yeah, we're on that team. And things that are destructive to life and destructive to consciousness are things that we can be like, okay, yeah, we don't resonate with that. We're not into that. So based off of that premise, I can say that for the vast majority of us, right and wrong is very clear. It's like what is healthy, what uplifts life, and versus what destroys life. So then when you ask, well, what is good and evil? If that's right and wrong, what is good and evil? So good and evil would be, good is that which consciously uplifts life and nurtures life. That consciously uplifts, organizes, and expands the human energy field or the aura. And that which is evil is that which consciously disrupts that or diminishes that or breaks down the human energy field or destroys life in general. So it becomes very clear of like what's good and what's evil. And this acts as a tool for being able to overrule a, say, naive or ignorant opinion that might have an opinion about, you know, how to use anger or the justification in jealousy or in hate or whatever it is. You can overrule that because in the measuring of the energetic field, when somebody is in a vibration of envy or hate or you know any of these various negative emotions, it's actually destructive to the energy field. So it actually gives us a way of being able to measure what is right and what is wrong. So inherently by nature, things that are destructive and constrictive to the energy field are wrong. And why this is so important also is because you know while all of us kind of intuitively, or most of us intuitively know that things like chopping down the rainforest is wrong, that we shouldn't be doing that. I don't think we have as clear of a connection to how the vibrations that we expose ourselves to and vibrate at and perpetuate in the world are actually connected to that kind of behavior. So for like an individual in their life, you know, the kind of behaviors of harboring negative emotions or perpetuating um, negative habits in the world. They'll have a direct effect on our energetic body and then thus an effect on our physical health, our physiological health. And so if you could track an individual on their path of, you know, growing in, you know, from a child as they got older, before they started taking on a habit like smoking cigarettes, for example, Um, there was a perpetuation of negative emotions and negative perspectives, things that if you were actually measuring the aura, you'd be able to see, oh, well, that that kind of thinking is distorting the aura. And, um, And if they had been notified of that, like if they knew that they were distorting their aura, it would have been kind of like a, um, a guide for them. But since they don't know that, they can move down a path of thinking and feeling and being that becomes so distorted that they start taking on habits that are just purely destructive, like smoking cigarettes. So you can see how that happens in an individual's person life. But then what I don't think we necessarily connect to that is that it's these kinds of thoughts, emotions, um, and subtle actions that turn into lifestyles in our everyday lives that when brought from the micro of the individual into the macro are actually the momentum behind things like chopping the rainforest down. So on the micro scale, it's something like, well, the kind of person that's smoking cigarettes, that's watching smut uh, media that is perpetuating hate and destruction in their life, a collective of that, of people like that, and the energy of a collective of people that are acting like that is actually what leads to collective destruction of the ecosystem, like chopping the rainforest down or 
you know, the oil industry, or things like, you know, all the things that are destroying the planet. So we as individuals might not think that we're actually adding to the problem directly. And maybe we're not directly in a sense of, you know, maybe we're not supporting some of these industries uh, to, our, to the best of our degree. But if we're still harboring the kinds of vibrations that are distorting our energy field, that are adding to the collective distortion of the collective's energy field, then we actually still are a part of the problem. Now where this leaves me with this is in a somewhat tricky situation, and I've been talking to different scientists about uh, how this can be done in a practical way. But measuring the human energy field is not necessarily the easiest thing to do in a practical way. And um, what I would like to see is some sort of technology that gives us the capacity to measure the energy field in a very practical way so it can be more recognized by mainstream science and then it can also be more accessible to the average person so that we can walk around in our daily life and have more or less a, uh, a good sense of whether we're doing something that is growing our aura or something that's destroying our aura. So you know, this is something I'm going to be talking with Dan Winter about. Um, this is something I have, you know, there's some scientists here in Sedona too, um, plasma physicists that, that I'm friends with that um, I'm interested in getting deeper into this idea with. But ultimately, uh, the point that I'm trying to make here is that we do have a way of codifying right and wrong and good and evil. And it's simple as this, is if it builds and organizes and expands the human aura, then it is good. And if it destroys it and breaks it down, then it is bad. So this is our compass for what is right and wrong. We don't need you know, religious texts or Ten Commandments to tell us that now. Now, um, with the right maneuvering, we will be able to have scientific way of measuring this. And this will relieve tremendous issues with the philosophy of right and wrong. And it will help us transcend this kind of relativistic uh, trap that we find ourselves in right now. This postmodern trap of, you know, everything's relative and everyone has their own opinion and, and there is no ultimate right or wrong. There is no actual good or evil. It's all your perception of it. Because once we can measure this, when you have a destructive thought, when you have a jealous thought, an angry thought, it does restrict your energy field. And the restriction of our energy field, doing things that are from a negative space of consciousness that's actually destructive, these kinds of things that is what leads to destruction in the world. So getting that compass, I think, is crucial for us right now. Now, in the meantime, we don't necessarily have a practical means for being able to measure our aura as we walk around in our daily life. But what we do have is we have our own subtle awarenesses. So this is why I'm such an advocate for becoming aware of your subtle energies, because when you become aware of your subtle energies, you can actually measure that on your own. You don't really need an outside source, though an outside source could be really helpful for, especially in the beginning, kind of teaching you, oh, when I think this way, this is distorting my energy field, and now I can feel how my energy field is being distorted. When I think this way, it grows my energy field, and I can feel when my energy field is being, you know, being grown. But um, so in the beginning, it can be really helpful for that. But you don't need to do that. So in the meantime, as this thing's being worked out, and I hope that this is something that, you know, I don't know, other people might be working on. I'm not trying to say like I'm pioneering the whole thing, but I mean, this is something that I, I really do want to see happen, and I'm going to work to, um, to make sure that it's more available for people, is that if we can start tuning into the subtle energies in our body and start becoming aware of when we're constricting and restricting or when we're feeling holes in our aura and then what we're thinking when we're doing that and what kind of behaviors actually make us uh, depleted and what kind of behaviors fuel us and becoming really aware of this. This is why I make videos like this, the different energy drains, six, you know, what I do, six energy drains that we have. This is why um, I made that video about um, subtle energy awareness is because this is basically our key to a map that will lead us in the direction of right behavior. When we become aware of the subtle energy movements in our body, our energy fields, then we become aware of how to move in the world. It's like a direct guide for our behavior. And then when we're in sync, when our behavior's in sync, then the actions that we 
take in the world will be ones that will heal the world. And we don't get caught or distracted by different philosophies or stuck in the mind of like, well, what's right or wrong or what's this? is this what I should do or shouldn't do? It becomes much simpler because it's like, well, if it's distorting the energy field, then it's, it's wrong, it's out of alignment. And if it is growing it, then it's in alignment, right? So I wanted to share this with you because I think this is potent and important information. And uh, I am sure that those of you that resonate with this, that are able to take it in, will see the value in it. So thanks so much for tuning in. This is Patrick Hayes. Like, subscribe, share with your friends. Hit the bell button if you haven't already hit the bell button, and then you'll be notified every time I release a video. If you have any questions or comments, put them in the comments below. And I am super stoked to continue bringing new content to you. So thanks so much, and I will talk to you next time. One love.